Hi all, this is Maria Clark from Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Today's project is something that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, many of us have various traditions to give thanks or set intentions or uh, maybe we journal about what we're grateful for. And I thought it would be really nice to do a Give Thanks Box project. Now this is a little box that I found um, at the Dollar Tree, but I've seen them around many places. They're um, a top-loading shadow box or um, a little fund uh, vacation fun box or something like that. Um, you could also use though, if you can't find a box like this, uh, you could also use just a regular lidded box that you want to paint on the top of and then drop your uh, little slips with your intentions or what you're thankful for. It's a really nice practice um, and it's kind of an alternative journaling form. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's our full supply list. And just to give you a little close-up of some of the supplies, for the paints I'll be using the DecoArt Gloss Enamels. I am painting on a glass surface, so either the gloss enamels or uh, a multi-surface paint is something that you'll want to use. And I'm using uh, Lavender True Blue, Calypso Blue, Festive Green, and Primary Yellow. I'll also be using the Serral Transfer Paper to transfer the pattern. The pattern is available in my Etsy shop and I'll be using the pencil eraser cap. I'll also be using my regular tools, but one thing I want to note, I've kind of designed these patterns that I make available so that you can match up the size of the tool, and I'll show that to you a little bit later on. So don't worry if you don't use the exact tool set that I use, um, because you're able to kind of uh, match your tool set to the pattern. So the box I'm using for this project is a top-loading shadow box. It's a, like a vacation fun. It says Aloha on it. Um, so it's got the screen printing and this background that I don't want. So I'm going to modify this a little bit. Um, what's nice about this is that the back comes off. And, and the shadow boxes that I've seen at other places like Michael's or the craft stores, things like that, are all sort of the same concept where the back comes off so that you can get the contents out or put contents in. So the back snaps off. And what my intention is, is to go ahead and paint this background um, because I, th I don't want that background, so I just want a, bl a black background. But stay tuned because I want to show you what happens. So I went ahead and paint this. I set it aside to dry, and now I'm going to take off the screen printing. I'm using 100% um, acetone on a cotton swab to just kind of get that initial... Uh, screen printing off and you can see it's taking some of the screen printing. Now this was a little bit unusual because usually the stuff I get from the Dollar Tree, um, the acetone takes it takes it right off. This one was a little more difficult and I think you'll find if you get something at Michael's or whatever that has a screen printing it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So I sort of softened it up for the acetone and then I just used a razor blade to scrape the rest of that off and it came off fairly easily once um, I kind of let the cotton swab sit on top of the screen printing for just a little bit it came up. So I've got that all off and I cleaned it up and I'm getting just going to finish it up. Now here's the back that I painted and I went to put a second coat on and look it just came straight off. I guess I didn't realize it was coated um, now that I look at it a little bit more carefully. So I'm going to go it's just um, an adhered piece. I'm going to go ahead and scrape that off. I've got a little plastic scraper here. Scrape it off, use a little goo gone to get off the residue, glue residue, and then I can just use that as my background. I don't have to paint anything. And you can see that that just snaps in there. And I'm going to leave that in while I paint so I think you could get a better view. And uh, you're going to see my camera maybe a little bit until I switch to another angle. Here's the pattern and I've just cut that pattern out. This is about five by five. Uh, the little glass section, this pattern's four and a half inches, and I will just get that taped on, taped on uh, so that pattern piece doesn't slip around. And then I will slip my piece of serial transfer paper under and start to trace on the lines. Now I'm just doing the primary uh, grid. I'm not tracing every little circle or anything like that because I've got the pattern that I can refer to. So I, uh, before I pull that tape up, I just check it to make sure that I've got uh, the grid down correctly. And now I'm just going to check my size of tools. I'm going to uh, 
use the the pattern to determine the size of tools that I need. Now I use these, uh, primarily I use the um, crystallite crochet hooks. I have lots of other sets though that I use and I find good success with just kind of matching these up. So you can see that I'm matching them up and just choosing a set of tools um, that I think are going to work. And that is really an easy way uh, to use these patterns. And I really do hope it makes it more accessible to a lot of people because we all have our different preferences for what the tools are that we use. So you can see that I'm just checking it out and trying to decide which ones. Don't forget your paint spread. So you want to choose a tool that's slightly smaller than, um, than the pattern because you, you want to get that, uh, that paint spreading. All right, I'm starting with the true blue and I'm using my M13 nine millimeter. And then I'm using my G6 four millimeter to place dots around. Isn't that blue vibrant? It's so pretty. Now I'm doing this because um, I want to kind of get ready for Thanksgiving. Um, and I decided not to use sort of traditional fall colors. I've done a lot of fall projects recently and I wanted to kind of get a little burst of color. So I'm using some different colors, um, but you could do this in a fall. A, a palette. You could do it in a Christmas palette. You could do it in bright colors like I'm doing, make it a little bit festive. Um, any color choices that you make would just be perfect on this. All right, so those two rows of blue are the um, G6 four millimeter, and then I'm going in between them with a nail dotter. And because this is glass, you know, it just comes right up with a damp cotton swab, and then I can just repaint. I leave my mistakes in the video because hopefully that encourages you to um, try um, to paint these these designs so you're not fretting over perfectionism because I'm not perfect and certainly um, make mistakes and you, we need to be able to clean those up um, and to carry on with our painting. We don't want to just dispose of everything that goes wrong. All right, I used a smaller tool to place some dots. Now I'm using um, my... Uh, J10 six millimeter to put the bright green. And I'll just get those all placed. Then I'm using my nail dotter in the primary yellow and I will just walk the dots around each one of these green dots. When I need to, I'll go back and add a little bit more paint to strengthen the dots. Now, when you follow along in the pattern, you may have more or less uh, when you walk the dots than I show because we all paint differently. So don't, don't worry about that. Your goal is to get uh, the dots kind of cradling that center uh, green dot in this case. You know, it's really nice about having something like this. Um, if you have a family get together as for Thanksgiving, although this year, I think, um, you know, we're not going to have much of family dinner this year in Colorado. We are, you know, being asked to kind of stay at home and keep gatherings to just the immediate um, family members, household family members. So we won't have any kind of big gathering, but it would be nice uh, for an occasion like Thanksgiving to have all of your guests um, fill out a little I'm thankful for slip and put it into the box. It's a nice kind of keepsake for that particular Thanksgiving and you can go back and look at what your family and friends had to say they were grateful for. That's a really, really special tradition. I'm going in with the lavender and my um, nail dotter put the dots down. Now I'm going in um, with the same size tool, the J10 six millimeter and the lavender. Now I'm going in with a very fine nail dotter and the green, and I'm just going to surround this uh, lavender dot with a little series of green dots. 
You can add as many um, or as few of these as you like. I think I can get probably 16 or so around. Uh, but that's a really small nail dotter. And I just do my north, south, east, west. Cut that in half. And then I'm able to determine if I can place any dots in between. And that method gives me a nice way to get as much symmetry in these dots as I can. And I've done that all the way around. Now I'm going to be making some swooshes and I'm using the Calypso Blue. And I will do three swooshes with a relatively small nail dotter and just carry that paint um, down to meet that petal with the that green dot with the yellow walk the dots around it. I'm doing the Calypso Blue. There's one more element to this section um, that I'll show you. I'll use a, I'll change out the color. So I'll just go ahead and get all the blue ones down first. I love these bright colors. They're just so, so nice. I had somebody in uh, one of my um, comments ask uh, if I just prefer to use the gloss enamels. I must be doing some quite a few projects with gloss enamels lately. Um, I'm Yes, I love the gloss enamels, but I'm using them specifically because I won't be varnishing this piece. It's a glass. Um, I'm going to uh, want to have the shine of the gloss enamel. So that's why I'm uh, choosing to put that kind of paint on here. You could use a multi-surface, which is often a satin finish. Um, but it I don't think there's any sense to, um, to varnish this. And I, I worry about how that would look on the glass. I don't know that that would look great. Um, to have the varnish, the you know brush marks and stuff like that on the glass. And this glass piece doesn't come out of the frame. So I'm kind of, you know, kind of making those kind of considerations when I decide what kind of paint. The other thing I've had comments on about choosing paint, you really have to be careful about the surface that you're painting on. Like if you're painting on a plastic surface or glass or metal or something, you do want to use a good multi-surface or perhaps the glass and gloss enamels um, so that you could get it good so that you get good adhesion. Now I'm using a, sna a small nail dotter and the green and I'm just kind of curving this last swoosh um, around the the purple and green uh, series of dots. And that just kind of fans it out a little bit. You could use the same color if you wanted. I just happened to want to include the green here a little bit more. Draw that out. Now I'm using my uh, pencil eraser cap and the true blue and lining it up and I'm rocking it back a little bit, uh, back and forth, just a teeny little bit to get those um, ovals a little bit larger. Uh, you can do that or not do that as you wish. Uh, I just wanted to get them a little bit larger because I'm going to dot around them. Now I'm using the primary yellow and I'll put a little crown at the top and then I will walk the dots around the oval. Isn't that a pretty design? Um, element there uh, with the oval dots. I think that really adds something special. I'll tidy those up just a little bit. Do you have any Thanksgiving uh, family traditions that you use uh, in your household? It would be fun to hear about those in the comments. All right, I've done those all the way around. And now I'm ready to go back in and do those outside rings. So I'm using the Calypso Blue, and I'm just using my grid marks. And I will be putting a dot in between these, so there's a little bit of spacing there. Um, but you can see how I'm using the grid, and it makes it so easy to have that grid on there. And I'll go back in and add a little bit, a, a dot in between there and a little, another little design element. Um, and we'll put two rows of uh, the outside rings, the outside circles. 
Now I'm going in with the lavender and a nail dotter that will fit in between and dropping a little bit of that lavender purple. Those two colors look really great together. And I will do that all the way around. Okay, now I'm going to add a little crown using a very small nail dotter and I'll just put a little crown right on top of each one of those little purple, the lavender dots, and I'll do that all the way around. You can get a, a little look at how that looks. Now I'm gonna go do my next row. And I'll be using the True Blue. And I will be putting uh, the dot, and I'm using my G6 four millimeter right above that little crown of lavender. Now I'm using the pointy end of one of my larger uh, nail dotters and I'm putting a little bit larger dot of primary yellow in between here. And I've done that all the way around and now I'm just going in between with a small nail dotter and putting the little crown in the opposite direction. And I'll do that all the way around. And then I will finish that with putting a little dot on the outside of those yellow. Sometimes I bumped up against the edge so I wasn't able to put that on there. That's okay, just follow and put as much of it as you can. And I've got all of that around, those little dots. And I will set that aside to dry. Let's take a little bit of a look um, at how this is looking so far really pretty. I think these colors are nice. I love them. Um, I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back in and do some top dots. All right, now I'm using, this is very well dry. I want to caution you. I'm not impatient at this step because I don't want to take a chance of messing it up. But I have a lightly damp cotton swab and I'm just taking off all of that transfer dust. And I'm going in now and top dotting and I'll use some primary yellow on this, the uh, True Blue. And then some Lavender on the Calypso Blue. And I'll just finish out my top dotting by alternating colors. Okay, here's my first layer of top dots. Let's take a look at that. That's looking nice. And now I've done um, my next layer. You can see that I've added um, just a few more top dots to kind of complete the look. And that's the finished piece. Now in the pattern, there's a larger piece um, because this is so small, um, I've done this sort of section separately and then I've included it as the center for a larger uh, piece that could fit on an eight inch or 10 inch surface. And then I'll just take, I just wanna show you how this would work. Um, I've got these little slips and they have printed on them, I am thankful, I am grateful, I resolve to, today I intend to, and it's got a date. And I'll just fill those out with, um, you know, what I'm grateful for or intention, because you can use this for lots of things. You could use it at the new year uh, for your new year's resolutions and just jot those things down and then slip them into your give thanks box. And um, you'll have something that you can, uh, you can go back and look at. You can keep filling up um, with all the things that you're grateful for in your life. And I hope you have a lot to be grateful for. I want to thank you so much for joining me in my studio today. Take care.